Nicole Demery, leader of the student ministry and a member of the women's ministry here at OWBC. On behalf of our senior pastor, Samuel Obul Sr., and the One Way family, I welcome you to What's on the Agenda in the News You Can Use for Friday, June 30th through Thursday, July 6th, 2023. The July prayer request booklets are available in the church foyer. Please take one and petition the Lord on behalf of those requesting prayers, the sick and shut-in, and all bereaved families, including our own McNeely, Flowers, and McHenry families. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. First Chronicles 16 11. God is our strength and will freely give it to us when we look to him in all we do. The church van is available to pick you up to attend Sunday worship experience. If you need a ride, please contact the church office at 512-238-6922, no later than Thursday noon during the church office hours of 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., Tuesday through Thursday, for a pickup on the following Sunday. On Wednesday, July the 5th, Bible study with Pastor Bull begins at 6.30 p.m. The student ministry Bible study will also begin at 6.30 p.m. GPS Bible study begins at 10 a.m. on Thursday, July the 6th in the ministry building. The church calendar is updated weekly. Please go to the OWB website, shown here, to view the latest updates and upcoming events. Please be sure to view this weekly's insightful health matters from our His Temple Health Ministry. Do you have announcements to include in the weekly broadcast? Please be sure to submit all announcements by Wednesday at noon of each week. If you are unsure of the dates to air your announcements, please contact the church office or Sister D. Watkins for assistance. Summer temperatures have already reached triple digits. Imagine having no AC in your home on a daily basis. The 2023 Central Texas Annual Summer Fan Drive is underway and runs through September the 15th. Pastor Bull is requesting the OWBC family take part in this year's event in a mighty way. Please bring your donated fans to the church and they will be delivered to family elder care for distribution to our elderly and vulnerable neighbors who don't have or cannot afford air conditioning. For the first delivery, it's scheduled Thursday, June the 29th. Your donations are needed by Wednesday, June the 28th for that delivery. If you would like to make monetary donations, please use the envelopes marked 2023 Summer Fan Drive Donation located in the foyer. God bless you in advance for your support. OWBC Women, the Desperate for Jesus Conference is now sold out. If you are registered for the conference, please be sure to sign up on the sheet in the church foyer so we know who will be attending and traveling with us to Dallas. The conference is Friday, July 21st through Saturday, July the 22nd. For additional information, please see Sister Crystal McNeil. The month of July and August have been designated as Dress Down Sundays. This means you may feel free to wear casual or business casual attire, such as polo shirts, slacks, and etc. to Sunday worship. Also, for the month of August, we will have our regular Sunday morning Bible study and worship experience. However, all of our ministries and activities are suspended for the month. This includes Wednesday night Bible study with Pastor Bull, the student ministry, Thursday GPS Bible study, and choir rehearsals. No ministries will meet during the entire month of August. Sunday morning Bible study class 
is from 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. each Sunday prior to the one-way worship experience beginning at 9 a.m. Please join us for Bible study and stay for the worship experience. You may join us for the Sunday worship experience on our Facebook and YouTube pages. But it is a blessing for all of us when you are in person for the full worship experience. The church is located at 2107 Harriman Road in Round Rock. We look forward to worshiping with each of you this Sunday. And our thought for the week, worrying doesn't take away tomorrow's troubles. It takes away today's peace. Give it to God and don't worry. Have an abundantly blessed week. And from the desk of Pastor Bull, don't let the devil steal your joy.
Shall we pray? <clears throat> Father God, we, we thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity. We just thank you, Father God, that you gave us all traveling grace to your house this morning, Father God. We thank you, Father God, in, in, in anticipation, Father God, for the word that we'll hear this morning, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that every day you renew us, Father God, with your grace and mercy. We thank you every day, Father God, that you blessed us with our families. We thank you, Father God, for all those prayers that we are going to pray and have prayed that we continue to trust and believe in you. We pray and ask you right now, Father God, that you continue to watch over this house, Father God. Continue to bless our pastor, Father God. Father God, we love you. We need you. We continue to honor you, Father God. We ask all these prayers in your precious and holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you could turn with me to Psalms 37. And I'm going to start with verse 3. And it reads, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the, in the land and enjoy the safe pastures. Delight in yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. You may be seated. Say praise the Lord. Praise Come on, man. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together and bless the Lord. God has blessed us with another soul to be baptized. Amen. Let me say that one more time. Maybe y'all hear what I'm saying because y'all were clapping. I said the Lord has blessed us to have another soul to be baptized. And we just praise God. Elder Richardson is going to baptize his son. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. We praise God. This opportunity. So now as we prepare, as we prepare, will you hear me saying, take me to the water.
want to be so close. The reason I see you each and every day, because I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to be so close The reason I seek you Each and every day Because I want to know you Lord, I want to know you The reason I read your word as much as I do Is because I want to know everything about you I want to know you in your strength, your power, and mind. Lord, I'm asking you to give me spiritual sight. I want to know the things that bring you honor and praise. I want to know the things that cause my hands to raise. More than just the words I read on every page. Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you. Lord, I want to know you. I want to be so close The reason I seek you Lord, I want to know you I want to know you I heard about your love, your grace And power that saves Heard about the mercies That are new every day Heard about the awesome sacrifice that you made. Lord, I know that you're deserving of my highest praise. About the great and mighty things that you do. What you've done for others, for me, you'll do the same things too. But it's not just enough for me to hear about you. Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to be so close The reason I seek you Lord, I want to know you I want to know you Lord, I want to know you I really want to know you I really want to know you Know you, know you Lord, in a very real way I really want to know you I really want to know you. I really want to know you, know you, know you. Lord, can you help me say? I really want to know you. I really want to know you. I really got to know you. I really want to know you. I really want to know you. In a very I really wanna know you. I really wanna know you. I got to know you. I really wanna know you. I really wanna know you. Really, I really wanna know you. Really wanna know you. Really wanna know you. I really gotta know you. In a very real way. In a very real way. In a very real way, in a very real way, really wanna know. I really got to know. In a very real way, in a very real way. Just like the woman at the well, you gave her living water. She ran on to tell. Just like the Hebrew boys, they were thrown in the fire. Trusted in the Lord in a very real way, in a very, in a very real way, in a very real way. Lord, I want to know you. 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 I want to know you.
want to be so close the reason I seek you each and every because I want to know you 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 I got to know you I know you I want to know you My God, my God is awesome. He can move. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. My God, my God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weak. Where I've been weak. Forever He will reign. Forever He will reign. Let's do it again. Say, my God. Can move mountains. Can move mountain. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. But my God, my God is all. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength. Forever He will reign.
Jesus to partake of this Lord's Supper. We thank you to God for the sacrifice you made on our behalf. It should have been us yes. on that cross, dear God. We thank you for not coming down, standing up there and dying on our behalf. And God, we pray that you would forgive us of our sins things that we've said or done that's been contrary to your will. Pray to God that you would forgive us for omission, commission, things that we've omitted that we should have done, dear God. Forgive us. Created us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. You make us ready. Prepare us, our hearts and minds. Remove any and everything that's of you, that's not of you, dear God, out of our minds in the name of Jesus. God, we just love and we praise you. We ask this all in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Those of you that with me, 
We'll be taking this last summer. Would you please stand to your feet if you're able to stand? The word of God says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, for this is my body. You may eat. After which he took the cup and gave it to the disciples and told them to drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament. Do this in remembrance of me. You may drink. You that on this side pass the cup this way. You on this side pass the cup this way. The Bible says, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. I know it was the blood. I know it.
another parable found in Matthew. Found in Matthew. And I pray that it bless you. Open your Bibles this morning to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. Verse 24 through 27. If you don't have your Bible, get it on your app. Get it on your phone. Remember, it's not a smartphone if you don't have a Bible app on it. It's going to make your phone smart. Amen. Let me express why you find me. Let me express my appreciation for our ministers, Dr. Inchell in his absence, Elder Belchers, Grantham, and Richardson and their wives, our deacons, and their wives. Servant Leader Watkins in his absence and his wife, deaconesses. Ministry leaders, our GPS. Woo! Student ministry in the house. Plus your ministry, I remind you. I'm building something to last. Amen. I'm building something to last. Amen. Thank you so much, ushers. I read a statistic that between the year 2010 up until now there has been 121 structural collapses around the world that has resulted in the death of 3,000 plus people. Also what made that statistic even more alarming was some of those collapses were not in remote places. Not in places that were underdeveloped or third world countries. Some of those collapses happened right here in the United States. 121 times someone built something and what they built 
didn't last. 121 times someone constructed something and what they constructed collapsed. I thought about that as I was re researching for this message and it hit me. What a horrible tragedy. What a waste. All of that planning, formulating, all of that budgeting, and building, trying to erect something just for it to come down crashing. What a waste of time, talent, treasure, resources. What a waste of energy only to see all that you have planned for and ultimately built come crashing down. I mentioned this issue of crashing and collapsing because in essence that's what this text is painting on this morning. Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he is warning them against building things that cannot last. Jesus in this particular parable is admonishing his disciples that whatever you build you ought to build it to last. In this parable, Jesus is talking about two different men who had two different kinds of houses. And it's interesting that when you peel back the layers of this parable, we learn several things about these two houses. Uh, the first thing that we learn about these two houses, number one, is that both houses were similar. The Bible talks about a house in verse 24. If you still have your Bibles open. And it talks about a house in verse 26. The Bible says in verse 24 that the wise man built, had a house. And in verse 26, it says the foolish man also had a house. And when you stop and look at the text, if you still have your Bibles open, nothing else is mentioned about the construction of their houses in terms of material, which is to, to suggest that there's no other differentiating qualities about the houses. That the same drywall one used to build their house is the same drywall someone else used to build their house. The houses were similar. Please don't miss that. The houses were similar. The wise man didn't have superior material to build his house nor did the foolish man have inferior equipment to build his house. Both houses, my brothers and sisters, were similar. The second thing we learned about these two houses is that both houses had storms. The Bible says in verse 25 that the storm came on the wise and verse 27, the Bible says the storm came and hit the foolish man's house. And when you compare verse 25 and verse 27, you discover the, verse, the verses are identical. Rain fell on both houses. The floods came up against both houses. The wind blew against both houses. Let me say that slow. When you look at verse, the text in verse 25 and verse 27 and compare these two verses together and you'll discover that both the wise man's house and the foolish man's house both were hit by storms. Let me put a quarter in this meeting park here for just one moment and tell you that you can't live good enough not to have storms. You can't pray hard enough not to have storms. Hmm? You can't tithe consistently enough not to have storms. The text said the storms hit both houses. So when you look at these two houses, as I walk a little close to my text, we discover that both houses were similar. Both houses had storms. But one house was able to survive. The Bible says in the B clause of verse 27 that the foolish man's house fell 
And according to the text, it didn't just fall, but the Bible says that the house had a great fall. I wish I had a Bible reader. And I thought that was very interesting that both houses, my brothers and sisters, were similar. That both houses had storms, but only one house was able to survive. I, I was impressed with the builder, the wise man, because I, I'm talking to someone this morning that needs to know that your building can stand. You, you, you need to know that, that, that you can build something that's able to withstand the test of times. The, this word was such a powerful word at this time in the life of these disciples because Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 denotes the ending of the Sermon on the Mount. And the Bible uh, teaches us that Jesus has been sharing these principles with his disciples which started in chapter 5, verse number 3. And it ends in chapter 7, verse number 24. Jesus says, Any man that hear these words, shout these words. These words refer to the words that stated, um, that he was speaking in chapter 5, verse 3. Jesus said, any man that hears my words will be likened unto a man that built a house that can stand. And I, I, wanted to, I, wanted to, I wanted to talk to this man that built this house that, that, that could withstand storm because the truth of the matter is there are those of us in this building that can't afford another crash. Somebody ought to help me preach. I'm talking to someone here this morning that you're at a point in your life and you're tired of starting over. You're at a point that, that whatever relationship you start, you want it to last. That whatever business venture you start, you want it to last. That whatever you engage yourself in, have I got a witness here this morning? You're at the point that you're tired of entering into temporary building construction projects to have that project not stand the test of times. This text, my brothers and sisters, is tailored to teach us that whatever you do, if you do it the right way, it can stand the test of times. Look at your neighbor and tell them your building can stand. So, so I want to unpack this text right quickly. Because there are some teachable truisms tucked away in this text that I want to transport into your temple. Now I only have two points this morning, but they're two good, real good points. The, the, the text is about two things. It's about preparation and foundation. Okay, write that down. The text is about preparation and foundation. I want you to know, I wanted to know, brothers and sisters, what this wise man did. So I reached out to him this week, and I found him, and I, and I asked him a simple question. I said, bro, how are you able to build a structure, a house, that was able to stand? You had a house that was similar. You had a house that's, that, that, that had storms. But you had a house that was able to survive. So he spoke back to me and he said, Pastor, the reason why my house was able to survive was because of the preparation I made before I ever started constructing my house. The man's house was able to survive because of the preparations that were made. Now, brother and sister, when you look at Matthew's narrative, you'll discover that Matthew's text doesn't go into details as to what preparations this man made. However, when you read the Luke's narrative, in Luke chapter 6, verse 28, you'll see that this man made one significant preparation that was paramount for the survival of his house. 
Luke chapter 6 verse 48 suggests that before this man went up, here it is, he dug down. Somebody ought to help me preach. The, the, the text says in Luke 48, if you, if you have your app open, that the man dug deep. Look, look at your neighbor and tell him, before you build, you got to dig deep. Brothers and sisters, before you build, before you erect anything, before you try to do anything, before you jump into a relationship, before you jump out of trying to build something significant with someone, the first thing you better do is take the time to dig deep. Now, I saw a picture of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Some of you are familiar with this and seen it before, maybe even traveled there and saw it. See, Amen. Leaning Tower of Pisa is the most famous bell tower in the world. However, the claim to fame for this bell tower, brothers and sisters, is not the fact that it took 344 years to build this building. This building is not known for the fact that it's complete with the best white marble that money can buy. The claim to fame is not the fact that there are 207 columns wrapped around eight stories of building. The claim to fame of this building is the fact that while the building was under construction, the building started to lean. And the reason why the building started to lean is because the architects and the contractors of this building did not dig footers that were deep enough to sustain the weight and the height of the building. In other words, the building uh, of, the, the, of the Leaning Tower of Pisa did not dig deep enough to sustain uh, this building. Come here, let me talk to some of y'all. There are some of you here this morning if you want to be honest, your collapses in your life could have been avoided if you have, would have taken time just to dig a little deeper. And let me just meddle, just let me just meddle just a tonight a bit this morning, just, just, just a little bit. Maybe if you would have dug a little bit deeper, you would have recognized why that person acted the way they act. If you would have dug just a little bit deeper, you could have explained why they've had five jobs in six months. If you would have just dug a little bit deeper into their family history, you would have discovered that crazy just didn't start with them, but their mama and them was crazy. Their granddaddy was crazy. Somebody ought to help me preach here. If, if you would have just have dug a little bit deeper, maybe you would have uh, uh, discovered why they always have financial issues. Most times, brothers and sisters, we mess up because we start building new stuff without taking the time to dig a little deeper. But I came by to tell somebody this morning, if you're going to build something that lasts, the first thing that you have to do is take the time and start digging. Come on, touch your neighbor and tell them, dig a little deeper, dig a little deeper, dig a little deeper. You gotta dig, you gotta dig, you gotta dig, you gotta dig, you gotta dig a little deeper, dig, dig a little deeper, dig. Always, digging deep always takes patience. Digging deep, my brothers and sisters, always takes effort. It takes energy. Digging deep may cause other people to have their building up first. To dig deep may cause other people to jump the broom first. It may cause other people to get what they want first. Oh, you may not get it before they get it, but if you take the time to dig deeper when your building becomes erected, your building will last the test of times. Why? Because you took the time to prepare before the building was erected. Look at your neighbor and tell them preparation, preparation, preparation. Next time someone asks you why, why are you still single, tell them I'm preparing. If someone asks you why are you still going to school, tell them I'm preparing. 
When someone asks you why you're still praying the way you're praying, tell them I'm preparing for something. When they ask you why you're in church every time the doors open, tell them it's because I'm in preparation mode. When they ask you why you are always fasting and praying, tell them I'm in preparation mode. When, when they ask you, girl, why are you always that one-way Baptist church? Tell them I'm in preparation mode. Why? Because I want my building, whenever God bless me to start erecting my building, I want my building to last. So I'm going to take time to dig deep. Now I know I'm getting ready to lose some amens. But I'm coming to get you. Because brothers and sisters, digging deep connotes more than digging deep into someone else's life. Sometimes before you build, you have to dig into your own issues. Hmm. Sometimes you have to just dig into your own issues. You have, to, you have to figure out why is it that you always attract a certain kind of person? Why, why, why is it you always do that, 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 that thing? Why you cannot commit? Why, why are you acting crazy all the time? Why, why do you think you are the boss of everyone? Why, why do you conduct yourself in that matter? Why are you attracted to married people? You, you have to dig deep into your own dysfunction before you try to build something with someone else. You dig deep into your own psychology. The text says, the text says, the text says, the, the first thing the man did was prepare and dug. Am I talking to anyone this morning? Am I talking to anybody here this morning who's in the digging process? If that's you, tell your neighbor, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging. Why, why, why am I walking around here with this shovel in my hand? It's because I'm digging. Why do I have this spiritual hard hat on my head? It's because I'm taking my time and I'm going to dig. It's, it's, it's a laborious process. It's a lonely process, but, but it's a process that has to be done, brothers and sisters. Why? Because the success of my building is predicated on how deep I go. You can't expect to have a relationship with the Lord without going deep sometime. You have to go deep in prayer, deep in Bible study, deep in fasting. You have to spend some time and go deep. The Bible says that this man prepared. It was the preparation that the man made. And the elder, I just kept on talking to him, and I wanted to know how was it that your building was able to stand. The first thing he said was, Pastor Bull, it stood because of the preparation I made before uh, building. But then he said, secondly, it stood because of the foundation I laid for the building. Somebody shout foundation. He said, he said, he said, he said, my building was able to stand, number one, because of the preparation I made before the building. But secondly, my building was able to stand because of the foundation that I laid for my building. Don't miss this, brothers and sisters. Don't miss this, brothers and sisters. In Matthew Chapter 7, verse 24, 26. There are two foundations that are mentioned. The Bible says in verse 24 that the wise man built on a foundation. Is that in your Bible? Verse 26 says that the foolish man built on a foundation. Verse 24 says that the foundation for the wise man was what? Rock. You still have your Bible open, right? Verse 26 says that the foundation for the foolish man was what? Two foundations, brothers and sisters, mentioned in the text. Verse 24, the foundation for the wise man was rock. Foundation for the foolish man, verse 26, was sand. I'm going to keep on saying it until you get it. It's two foundations. The foundation for the wise man was? Verse 24, the foundation for the foolish man was? Verse 26, there are only two foundations. 
Watch this. Everyone under the sound of my voice right now, even on Facebook and YouTube, whether you know it or not, you are building on one of those foundations. Either you are building on rock or you're building on sand. And because some of y'all can't tell the difference between rock and sand, allow me the next 15 minutes to explain the difference between rock and sand. I'll take the latter first. The foolish man built on sand. Somebody shout sand. Sand, sand, sand. We like to play in sand. We like walking in sand. If you ever been to California, Florida, among other places, we have some beautiful beaches in these United States. Just walking on sand is wonderful. And while sand is good to walk on, sand is good to play in, it's horrible to build on. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you can't build on sand. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know, you can't build your hopes on sand. You can't build your family on sand. You can't build your future on sand. You can't build anything on sand. Well, pastor, what is sand? Because I want you to remember what sand is. You know I love acronyms. So I took the word sand, and I want to use an acronym to describe to you the kind of activity and things that cannot be built on sand, S-A-N-D. S stands for stuff. You can't build on stuff. Somebody shout stuff. No, 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 you can't build on stuff. And unfortunately, we're living in a materialistic society. And when you have a whole bunch of stuff, you attract a whole bunch of people. But I came to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that you can't base a relationship on the stuff a person has. I don't care what kind of car he drives. I don't care what kind of house a person lives in. I don't care what kind of bling bling that person may have. I don't care what kind of nice clothes that person may wear. You cannot base a life decision on stuff. Because stuff comes and goes. You can have stuff one day, lose your mind the next day. I've seen people whose world was wrapped around their stuff. And as soon as their stuff was taken away from them, they're ready to throw in the towel. You don't believe me? Look it up. Adolf Merkel was one of the richest men in the world, a billionaire. His wealth started to decline. He was so distorted. I said a billionaire with a B. He was so distorted before because his wealth was declining. He got dressed one day, walked out of his house, laid on a railroad track until a train came and ran him over. Why? Because his whole world was wrapped around his stuff. But my brothers and sisters, can I tell you something? Your motivation as a child of the Most High cannot be stuff. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 33, if ye seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, stuff will be added unto you. Don't ever get caught up with stuff. Because most of us are just one tragedy away from losing all our stuff. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that God can allow you to have one prolonged sickness and that prolonged sickness can wipe your stuff out you can get one child in trouble and lose all your stuff trying to get that child out of trouble 
Don't get caught up with stuff. Why? Because stuff is sand. It's sand, it's sand, sand. What, 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 what is sand? S is for stuff. But A stands for attraction. Somebody shout attraction. You, you can't build on attraction. Because you, you can get fooled by the view. Uh, you you, you want to be attracted by whoever you're trying to build with. You, you want him to be tall, dark, and handsome. But, oh, brothers and sisters, uh, sister, uh, ladies, if he's short, fat, and ugly, and he's going to treat you better, you better take door number two. Don't ever get caught up on attraction because I've seen Father Time catch Mother Nature all the time. Don't, don't, don't get caught up in looks. Why? Because looks can change. I've seen a figure eight turn into a figure O in six months. I've seen, I've seen a six pack turn into a keg in eight months. You can't build everything on attraction because there isn't anything attracted about getting your lights cut off. There isn't nothing, anything attractive about your car being repossessed. I don't care how fine you are. If you can't pay the bills, time catch up with fine. <laughs> Told my he fine, child. He fine. You can't build on sand. You, you can't build on stuff. You can't build on attraction. In is for notoriety. You can't build on notoriety. You, you, you can't build on a person's popularity. You can't build on a person's title. Did you not know some people like you for what you do and not for who you are? There's a difference between who you are and what you do. You need to find somebody that loves you for the person and not for your position. Because if they don't love you for your person and for your position, if you ever lose your position, you may lose that person. But oh, if you can find you a ride or die person that loves you for who you are, then you can lose your job and you will make it a spam night peanut butter and jelly night. If you find someone that would ride with you because of who you are, you can lose some stuff and you can still make it together. That's, that's sand. That's sand. You, you can't build on sand. You can't build on stuff. That's sand. You can't, can't build on attraction. That's sand. You can't build on notoriety. That's sand. But can I give you one more the D, you can't build on desire. Ooh I see you, I see you, I see you. I see you, I see you. You have some fire and desire. I see you, I see you looking like you're looking. You have your desire, you, you. I want to be married. I want a husband. I want a wife. I'm tired of being a bridesmaid. Tired of being the best man. I, I, I want to be a bride. I, I want to be the groom. My biological, biological clock is ticking, ticking, ticking. I'm ready. I have these desires. I'm tired of being a queen sleeping in a king-size bed. I have these desires. Everyone is getting married except me. I want a man. I want a wife. I need this. I need that. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, your desires can get you into trouble. 
You cannot build on your desires. Don't you make a decision on your desires because desire, watch this, will have you settling him. Your desire will make you settle for Mr. Right now and not Mr. Right. Desire will make you miss your Boaz and settle for a broke. I mean, uh, you know what I mean. Did I say that? You cannot settle. You cannot give into your desire because desire will have you going the wrong way. Let me tell you what desire will do. Desire will make you spend more money than you want to spend, go further than you want to go, and then stay longer than you want to stay. You cannot get hung up on desire. Why? Because all that stuff is sand. Somebody shout sand. You can't build your hope. You can't build your life. Build your future on sand. You have to build on the rock. What is the rock? I'm glad you asked. First of all, the rock is the word. Somebody shout the word. the word. It is the express word of God. It is the express word of God. Look at verse 24. Jesus says, if any man, any man who hears these words of mine and do these words will be likened unto a man that builds his house on a rock. That's verse 24. So the word, number one, is the express word of God. It's, it's, it's the logos. It's the written word of God. If you want to build something to last, brothers and sisters, you have to build it on the word. It amazes me how when you start talking about stuff, like the word of God, how quiet people get. If, if, if I was talking about favor, if I was talking about naming and claiming and call it and haul it, if I were talking about reach up and grab it, if I were talking about it's coming tomorrow to stand up, turn around three times, and you're going to be at your doorstep, some folk will be running around this church. But I came to tell you that all that stuff is good. You can call some stuff and haul some stuff. You can name some stuff and claim some stuff. But if you have the word of God undergirding you when you name it and can't claim it and when you call it and can't haul it, you can still give God some praise up in here. Because you have the word of God. Is there anybody here this morning that know without a shadow of a doubt how effective the word of God is? The express word of God. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. How many times, brothers and sisters, have you walked into church on Sunday morning on the verge of throwing in the towel, on the verge of waving the white flag, and the preacher who had not been on your Twitter, who had not been on your Instagram, who had not been on your Facebook page, who had not been on your cell phone, gave a word from the Lord of Taylor made for your life. How many times, how many times have you walked in the house of the Lord on Sunday morning or Wednesday night ready to give up but received a word from the Lord? It put running in your feet. Clapping in your hands, joy in your soul. How many times have you came to church and got a word from the Lord? So I want to tell you this morning that if you want to build a family, build a future, build your finances, build your faith, you have to learn how to build on the word of God. Why? Because everything you need is found in the word of God. If you need healing, it's in the word. If you need deliverance, it's in the word. If you need hope, 
it's in the word. If you need joy, it's in the word. If you need power, it's in the word. If you need forgiveness, it's in the word. If you need love, it's in the word. If you need salvation, it's in the word. Whatever you need is found in the word of God. David said, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my pathway. You, you have to have the word of God. Look this way up here. Look this way up here. The word has to be more brothers and sisters than just a book that sits on your coffee table. The word has to be more than just a book on your dashboard talking about thou shalt not steal. The word has to be more than just a book in on your shelf. Watch this. But the word has to be basic instructions before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E. It has to be your GPS. And I'm not talking about God's precious seniors. I'm talking about guide and primary source. It has to be the book you read when you get lost. The word has to be what you read when you want to know the will of God for your life. Is there anybody here this morning that has learned how to love the word? Is there anybody here who has learned how to lean on the word? Because everything else is going to be passing away. Except the word of God. All this stuff that we have, this stuff is not going to last. Because the Bible said that heaven and earth is going to pass away. But the word of God is going to last forever. Somebody shout the word, the word, the word. The rock, the rock, the rock. What is the rock, Pastor? What is the rock? First, first of all, the rock is the word. It's the express word of God. But not only is the rock the express word of God, but last but not least, as I get across the field, the rock is the living word. When you talk about the word, you're not only talking about the express word of God, but when you talk about the word, you're talking about the living word of God. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Then the text says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Do I have any Bible readers? And so when you're talking about the rock being the living Word of God, we're talking about the rock being Jesus Christ. Uh, I just told you that the Word is Jesus Christ. Let me say it one more time. Church folk don't know when to shout. I just told you that the rock is Jesus Christ. And uh, let me tell you why I shouted on that, brothers and sisters. That shouted me because it answers a whole bunch of questions. If the word is Jesus Christ, I understand why I'm able to keep on standing when I feel like giving up. Because I had to call on that name. Uh, and every time I've called on my rock, that rock always changes things. Every time I've called on my rock, my rock has always made a difference. Every time I called on my rock, things can't say the same. Have I got a witness here? I dare you tonight when you go home and you've got a problem that you cannot solve. Start calling on the rock. If you have a child that will not behave, I dare you to start calling on the rock. Go home if you have bills to pay. I dare you to start calling on the rock. 
If you have a mountain that will not move, if you have a valley that you can't not tunnel through, I double dog dare you to start calling on the rock. Because my experience tells me uh, that things can't stay the same the moment you call on the rock. Have I got a witness here? High five your neighbor and tell them uh, there is a name. Come on and say it like you mean it. Uh, tell them there is a name. I love to hear. Uh, I love to sing it worth up. It sounds like music up in my ear. It's the sweetest name on earth. You have a rock. And you need to call on the name of Jesus. The Bible teaches us that the rock, you can lean on him because it is the express word. But then it is the living word. It's the name of Jesus. Is there anybody here that know you can trust the rock? I said, is there anybody here that know you can trust the rock? Well, I'm here to tell you that yes, you can trust the rock. You can trust the rock to build your family on. You can trust the rock that you can trust him. Have I got a witness here to build your future on? You can trust the rock up to build your marriage on. You can trust the rock up to build your business on. You can trust the rock up to build your career on. Why? Because the rock has history. How do you know, Pastor Bull? Because when I look back up over my life, I see people before me uh, who has leaned on the rock uh, my mama uh, Ella Bull uh, is the rock uh, of our family uh, and that rock uh, says brothers and sisters uh, she's been leaning on that rock uh, for a long time uh, and it is the same rock uh, my mother stood on uh, which is the same rock uh, that her mother stood on uh, my grandmother uh, Willie Faye Greenwood uh, you don't hear me it is the same rock I'm standing on it is the same rock my daddy stood on Carl L. Bull Sr which is the same rock his mother stood on Jesse May Oliver it's a proven rock is there anybody here that can trust the rock turn to your neighbor and tell them neighbor I don't know what you're going through but tell them neighbor the one thing I know of you can trust the rock have I got a witness here I said you can trust the rock is there anybody here that can trust the rock because storm may rise winds may blow and the floods are going to rise but when the storm comes and the lightning flash and when the thunder roll and when the floods rise I'm standing on the rock have I got a witness here if you're standing on the rock find you a neighbor and tell them I'm building something to last come on tell them neighbor I'm building something to last the devil has tried to take everything that I have the devil has tried to steal your joy he tried to ruin your marriage he tried to make you give up um, he tried um, to make you surrender um, but I don't know um, who I'm talking to this morning but I came to tell the devil uh, I'm still here did you hear what I said I came to tell the devil uh, I've taken um, your best shot uh, but I'm still uh, standing up uh, and what you need to do is uh, praise God uh, for still being here uh, you need to praise him uh, for life health and strength uh, as I get ready to go uh, and take my seat uh, 
I just want to encourage somebody. I don't care uh, what it is you're going through. Uh, whatever you're going through, uh, you got to remember one thing. Uh, I want you to remember one thing. Uh, find you somebody. Um, shake their hand. Uh, look them in the eye uh, and tell them, be not dismayed. Uh, whatever be tied, uh, God will. Come on, look at it again. Tell them, be not dismayed. Uh, Whatever be tied to, tell them God will. God will take care of you. Tell them be needed wing of love abide. Come on, tell them God will. Oh, God will take care of you. What you have to do is hold on. To God's unchanging hand, tell him, hold on. Don't you dare give up. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Tell him, build your hopes on things eternal. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Tell him, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Just hold on. Again, if you can't hold on, just hang on. Whatever you do, don't you let go of his hand. Because he will not let go of your hand. I don't know about you, but I'm building something to last. Hold on, the doors of the church are open. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Time is filled with swift transition. Not all of us can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God on changing hands. Trust in him who will not leave you. What so ever years may bring. If my earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to him clean. Come on, cry help. Oh, you better hold God's unchanging hand. You better hold God's unchanging hand. Build your hope on the return. Turn on. You better hold on changing hand let me do this third verse listen when your journey is completed if to God you have been true so what else wants to come fair and bright the home and glow glory your Enraptured, so will bring. Oh, you better hold God. You better hold God's unchanging hand. Build up your hope on things eternal. You better hold. God's unchanging hand Build Eternal You better hold To God Look at your name and tell him You 
better hold. God's unchanging hand. You better build your hopes on the eternal. Turn on. You better hold. Hold on. Hold on. Whatever you're going through, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whatever you're going through, hold on. Whenever you get weak, hold on. Whenever you get tired, hold on. When is it not given to the swift or to the strong? Those that they do it until the end. Hold on. Hold on, don't you die giving in a hold on, 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 hold on.
The Lord is in this place. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Here we are. We own the altar here. Come on, let us let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, I feel him. I feel him. I, I feel him in here this month. I feel the Lord in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever, whatever your need is, God's going to fill it right now. God's going to do it right now. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you right now. Thank you for your goodness and, and for your kindness. Thank you for your tender mercy. Thank you for your outstretched hand. Thank you for touching us even now, Lord. We're here on the altar with uplifted hands. We come to say thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for touching our bodies. Thank you, Lord, for working that thing out. I had a problem, but I know you're going to solve it, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you know that you know better than we know. While we are here this morning, we're not just here, oh God, because uh, uh, we, have, we don't have faith. We're here because we have faith. We're here standing even on others' behalf. Some of us got sons and daughters that need the deliverance. So we're here standing on their behalf. Go, oh God, hear our prayer. Let our cry come into the now. Lord, bless us and, and, and oh God, send deliverance. We thank you for healing our bodies. We thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for healing our minds. In Jesus' name. Lord, we love you today. We thank you for that word. Help us to stand on that solid foundation. Because all of the ground is sick and sad. We thank you, Lord. I choose you, Jesus. I choose you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We choose to stand on that rock. That's why we're here, Lord, because we're standing on that rock in the name of Jesus. And I know, Lord, sometimes we may tremble at what's on our feet. We may tremble at what we're facing, but what we're standing on will never tremble. Lord, you never get nervous in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor for the things you have done. For the things you're going to do in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Lord I thank you that I won't leave here the way I came but I thank you that I'm gonna leave here better not bitter but better in Jesus mighty name to God be the glory amen amen and amen come on and give God some praise if you know that it's already done hallelujah praise the lord amen thank you jesus amen we have one this morning for membership oh you join listen you become to be a part of the greatest church in this side of heaven come on give a good god bless you amen amen god bless you the sisters will take you amen into the back. God bless you. Amen. like to give us your name, where you're from.
Wow. Aw, bless you. He come at the right time. And he say, I hear him say, T, T. And I, I couldn't see him, but I hear him. Oh. And I said, man, not, you know, not right now, because I got all this stuff on me. And he come right to, to my tower, and he prayed for me right there on the spot. Oh. So every time I see him, it's, 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 it's joy, and it's rejoicing that God gave me him. I don't have a big brother, but I got one now. Amen. God bless you. Hi. We're the Bradford family. We're visiting from uh, High Point Baptist Church in Austin. We're here with our mother this morning. I just want to say thank you for welcoming us. Amen. Welcome. Hello, I'm back again. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise Amen. Lord. I'm just so excited to be here, and I thank God for this wonderful couple right here. They, they the one invited us here from um, where my mom's godmother stays, and it's just a beautiful place with pleasant people there, and I'm just grateful to be here and to hear the second uh, message of this man of God. Yeah. And I shared your video on my wall on Facebook. <laughs> Amen. It was a blessing on last Sunday. Don't be lost in the house. Yes. Amen. <laughs> and I just thank God. And tomorrow's my, uh, today is my last day. Well, I'll be leaving tomorrow. So I thank you um, for taking me up there to get my prayer. Amen. For traveling grace. And this is my godmother. You can speak to her. <laughs> so this is my second time being here, but I was out. But I want to say something. My grandson lives here five years. Then my, my daughter came, my granddaughter came, and all of them. I lost my husband for 64 years. Wow. I lost him in California, then I lost my daughter, and I lost another son. And I said, I think it's about time I get out of here, God. So my daughter brought me here, and my place is at the, uh, what do you call it? It's conservatory here. Uh, so I'll, I'll be here, but let me tell you something. God has a place for me. Yes. And I've listened to you two times, young man. And I think God is saying to me, he said I would meet a preacher and some people. And I think, I think, I think, I think. I think. <laughs> I think, I think, that you, that you, that you were the one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll wait a little while longer. But this young man here, God said, I sent you here. And I told him, God has sent me all the way from California just for him. Mm. I don't know him and don't know nothing about him. But I told him, I said, I feel Shandoka. I guess you know I'm Pio Shandiaha. But I want you to know, so I'm glad I'm here. And I got a, just another look around. But I think, what's your name, Pastor? Samuel. Samuel I can't Bull. call the other name, but Pastor Bull. I'm here. But I got, I've got one more answer. But, but I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I, this is it. So I want you to know I'm glad to be here. And I'm going to be, I live right down the street, down there somewhere around here somewhere. 
but I, I work with, she worked, this lady. It's remarkable. I want to sit down. I want to start telling you. Make a much. <laughs> but I'm so happy that she works in the place. See, God orchestrates things. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He got two and two is four with God, not five. So God has placed me there with this lady. She works there. And she invited me to come to church. She, she brings me and takes me home. And I, I think God kind of orchestrated that too, you know. Yes. So, Amen. Amen. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hi, my name is Robin Bell. I just moved from Houston a couple of years ago to be here with my grandbabies. And I found the church uh, this morning online because I'm still looking for a church home. Um, and I'm very happy to be here. Amen. Thank you. Well, God bless each and every one of you. On behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Samuel L. Bull Sr., we welcome you to the One Way Worship Experience. If you are looking for a church home, you're in the right place. Look no further. Amen. One Way would love to have you. What you see is what you get. This is a loving church. Amen. Amen. And if you're traveling, we do pray for traveling grace as you make your way back home. Amen. Thank you guys for coming, and please do come again. We, um, please visit our website and all of our social media pages for the announcements. Amen? We have a card this week. Your ministry is making a difference. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. John 15 and 8. Just wanted to make sure you know how appreciated you are, not only for all you do, but for who you are a reflection of the one you serve. To my OWBC family, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Words cannot express my gratitude for the love, support, and generosity shown during this difficult time with the loss of my beautiful beloved sister. I pray God's blessings and abundance upon you for all that you represent of God's unfailing love. Hugs, Sister Krista McNeely and family. Amen. 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 And our thought for the week. A house must be built on a solid foundation if it is to last. The same principle applies to man. Otherwise, he too will sink back into the soft ground and become swallowed up by the world. Build your foundation on the word of God. And as Pastor said today, keep preparing, keep digging, and hold on. Have a blessed week. Shall we say amen? amen? Give the Lord another hand of praise. Amen. Let me, I pray that you receive what God had for you in the word of God. Were you blessed by the word on today? I mean, did, did this word really help you to be a better person? Did it, the word place in your spirit to be a better Christian? Amen. Did, did the word strengthen your relationship with the Lord? Amen. But well, we praise God that it bless you. I want to say to the visitors how grateful we are to have you here. We're praying that God will give you traveling grace and arrival mercy back to your destination. And to mother, you don't, you don't, you don't have to wait. I believe you in the right place at the right time. Amen. We're so glad. We're so glad to have you all here. Of all the churches that you passed, you chose to come here and we say thank you so much we're so glad to have you as well I'm glad we do our Facebook is still up our website is up so people go and look they can see what's happening here at One Way Amen and then when they they not only see what's happening but they come in what you see is what you get the exact same thing that's on the Facebook page and it's the same thing happening in house um, let me say I believe we have, let me give my certificate uh, to little Reverend over here, Reverend. Uh, <laughs> speak those things that are not as though they are. I don't even use that word. I don't even use Reverend. That's, that's an old school word. I mean, you got to be my age to know about Reverend. 
Hold it right here and then look up there. Look at the camera. I'm too dark to be in it. God bless you. Oh, that's you. That's you. Let me shake your hand. All right. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise for that young baby. That might be the next pass of one way. Who knows? Do we have the boys? Are the boys in the house? Kennedy's in the house? All right, we'll try to get them next time. Amen, amen. Let me say a couple of things and we're going from this place. Please keep uh, in prayer, Sister Clara Jones Franklin. She left last night. Her brother had a stroke and she flew out last night. Her mother's um, up in age. Sister's sick, so we want to keep her in prayer. Amen. Uh, we also want to keep our shut-in, uh, bereavement, the Jose family, the Carter family. We also want to keep our own brother Watkins in prayer. Amen. And all those loved ones, those that have lost loved ones and, and uh, need our prayers as well. Anyone that will be having a procedure done or have had a procedure done, keep them in prayer. Ladies, if you would please if I could have your attention just for one moment, this is the last day. Anything concerning the Desperate for Jesus Women's Conference, please see Sister McNeely immediately after church. Stand up, Sister McNeely, in case they don't know who you are. Please see her. If you are attending the Desperate for Jesus Women's Conference in Dallas, please see her immediately after service. Or if you're going to be here for the uh, in person, we're going to have a watch party here at the church. Sister Grantham's going to be giving leadership to that. See her after church. Today, we need to know who's going to attend so we know how much food to prepare for. Amen? Please, please, say, say that with me. Say, please. please. See one of these ladies after church. Thank you so much. Um, the church office will be closed this week. However, I do want to encourage you um, to attend Bible study on Wednesday night. I still will be teaching Wednesday night. I want to encourage you to please come out on Wednesday night. I want to thank you all so much for what you've done thus far for the fan drive, but we still have some more work to do. We still want to help those. That's part of our outreach. Amen. I want to thank each and every one of you for the fans, the contributions that you made. We never know when we're going to be on the other side of that and need some help. So we want to do what we can. We want to do unto others that we would have them do unto us. Amen. Um, now, all of those that have wedding anniversary in the month of July, please stand. If you have a wedding anniversary in the month of July, would you please stand? Amen. Amen. I'm going to give them just a minute in case they need to think about it. I'm going to give them just a few minutes. Somebody's going to forget and say, Charlie, this, this, this month. See, that right there. See what I say? <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> See, anyone else would like to stand, please? If your wedding anniversary is this month, would you like to stand, please? All right, since, since when is your wedding anniversary? I've been knowing her a long time, so her hand on her hip don't bother me at all. <laughs> I've been knowing her a long time. Amen. Amen. All right. 41 years. Deacon, our senior Deacon Campbell, Sister Campbell. 47 years. Amen. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, because he don't want to get in trouble. Go ahead and say it. How many? 40 years, amen. Amen, thank you. All right, he got his hand up back there. Eight years, amen. All right, we praise God for you. Now, all of you that have birthdays in the month of July, would you please stand? 
Amen. I'm going to give you an opportunity in case you forgot your birthday is in the month of July. Would you like to stand, please? All right, Mother, when is your birthday, Mother? All right. 81. Amen. Deacon Campbell? Oh, he, oh, he hadn't sat down. Okay, no. It's, no, he said no. No, 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 no. All right, sister. All right, all right. Another one of our senior deacons? 73. Amen. Now, you don't have to tell your age if you don't want to. They just, they proud of their age. Come on, sister. All right. All right, then. You okay? What did he say? Oh, July 11th. Amen, amen. All right, we ready. All right, those of you that uh, have birthdays and anniversaries, stand as we serenade you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. All right, birthday. Here we go, birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. It's your birthday, an anniversary, an anniversary, an anniversary, an anniversary, an anniversary. An anniversary. May God bless you. 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 May God. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Anymore. Everyone, please stand. Please stand. I love you. I remember when he got all the way up here. Brother Mathis, wave your hand. This is what who this is who we call the egg man. Wave it again. He has fresh eggs. He has Chickens. Okay. And he has some roosters too. But he, uh, he has some fresh eggs in the back. Be so kind, take a few. Not one person take all the eggs. So, you know, I know they're real good in cooking cakes, but be kind and let everyone try to get as much as you can. Thank you, Brother Matthews, for bringing those eggs for it. Amen. Now, I want you to know I love you. And when I say that, I'm not just saying it just to say it. I literally love you. Amen. Amen. And I am praying for you. Likewise, you do the same. I want you to have a phenomenal week. And I'll see you Wednesday night if the Lord say the same. And whatever you do, don't let the devil steal your joy. Now, hear it one way. Why do we do...